The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to proclaim the year of our Lord's favor. This is our Jubilee. This is the very first proclamation given to the corrupt in the synagogue by our Savior Jesus Christ. He proclaimed Jubilee as his initial proclamation to proclaim his coming. And this is the very thing which must happen today. Everything that we see across the planet is a symptom of a corrupt money system. Certainly the uh, deadly sins will remain. There will always be greedy people. There will always be lust. Those things will always remain. However, the devil has no power which we don't give him. And the way we give him our power is by using his corrupt, monopolized, usury, and debt-based money system. By putting our energy into that system, we energize those pieces of paper. We energize those digital bits. It's our energy, we believers, it's our energy which supplies that currency just like an electrical system. And in that way, it permits the devil to trick us into war, to trick us into self-limitation, to trick us. It tricks our daughters into following Miley Cyrus or the Kardashians. It tricks our sons in believing that the only way that they have value is if they become a professional athlete or gangster or a killer. It glorifies alcohol, which is one of the greatest poisons that there is to destroy lives and destroys people's souls. So we're at a time right now in human history, we're, we're literally sitting on a cliff. We, we're sitting on the edge to World War III. It's being engineered by the banksters as we speak in the Ukraine. It's being engineered. These conflicts are engineered in Palestine or Israel. These conflicts are engineered because what we think our governments are actually just bank colonies. And this is from the Bible. Borrower is slave to the lender. Every nation on the planet is in debt it, because it's borrowed money from the creditors. Well, who are the creditors? Well, I, I would invite you to take a dollar bill and flip on the back and you'll see a pyramid there. Well, that pyramid represents Pharaoh. Well, our modern day Pharaoh is the banksters, the monopoly usurers, mammon, the den of thieves. So this has been the recurring struggle throughout history is humanity's uh, struggle against these banking, these satanic banking powers. It was the same in Moses' time. That's why after they uh, uh, left captivity, the first thing they did is they wrote rules down for monetary control. Moses was a monetary reformer. Jesus was a monetary reformer. And the money type that they wanted, that they required, was a usury-free money system issued by the have-nots so that, that the elite are unable to dominate the masses. And that's the way that the slaves, the debt slaves, build pyramids uh, during Pharaoh's day. Uh, that's the way the den of thieves were able to control uh, the society uh, in Jesus' time. That's the way the Bank of England was controlling the colonies and caused depression because they required gold and silver money and the colonies had no gold and silver mines. Uh, the colonies were issuing, uh, Ben Franklin attributed the revolution to the colonists' inability to get their own honest money system away from the hands of the Bank of England or the puppet uh, King George. 
So we have to change our thinking is that these figureheads, these puppet politicians, they are not in charge. The devil controls the, the money system. You have people who are literally worship Satan because they want to be gods on earth. They want to be the modern day pharaohs. So this is, this is the history of the world. This is the same conflict that the founders of the United States were going through. The American Revolution was about monetary control. They were suffering. Uh, if they had abundance, they wouldn't have re rebelled, <laughs> you know? They only had a 3% tax on tea. It wasn't about the 3% tax on tea. It was about they had such oppressive monetary scarcity that they couldn't pay their debts and they were losing their farms. They were losing their, uh, they're in despair. They lost hope. And the greatest path, the greatest gospel, what did Jesus believe the greatest gospel was? The first thing he proclaimed was a jubilee. It was emancipation. It was serving God rather than mammon. It was, a, in, in, in Moses' time, they required the Jubilee Sabbath as law every 50 years. Well, the founders of the United States knew that, uh, you know, how many years later? 3,300 3, years later? And they put the message for Jubilee on the Liberty Bell because we are not created by the Creator to be slaves. Our Creator wants us to be free and have... We are born in His image. Does, does, does the Creator have self-limitation? Does the Creator live in scarcity and fear? Well, that's how we should be living. It's a crime that we are afraid to even discuss these topics in church. This is the very foundation of the struggle between the devil or the destroyer and the creator. It's the foundation of how the devil controls humanity is through money. It's reprehensible that we don't discuss this in church. It's disgusting. And I love, I love the people that I meet going to church because they're they're positive and spiritual. But in the meantime, when you bring up the issue of money and jubilee and usury, their heads go down. And almost, and this isn't just the congregation, this is the pastors too. They put their head down. It's, it's like there's a tyranny there, I'm, I'm telling you right now, that fear is the playground of the devil. And when we are fearful to talk about subjects, that's the devil's control over our mind. It's an Orwellian form of control. It's a tyranny over our mind that we're afraid to unspeak. It's like unspeakable. It positively is. I mean, think about it. The, the banksters, they are rubbing it in our faces. When they put the pyramid on the back of a dollar bill, they are rubbing it in your face, saying, we are your gods and you are building pyramids. The, 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 new, the bank buildings, the tallest buildings that you see in almost any city across the world are bank and insurance buildings. The commercials you hear relentlessly on TV are banking and insurance commercials. Banks and insurance companies are the only industries which can invent their own product. An oil company actually has to produce oil. A bank, its product is money. It invents it. And, and it's, it's twin brother insurance companies, they're, when they say they're suffering losses, they just invent the money. That's why they're so profit profitable and you see them on TV so much. In the same way that the banker invents the money when we sign the promissory note. Now, have you heard this before? Because this is important for you to understand. It's actually in 
the Federal Reserve's own publication called Modern Money Mechanics. Look it up. When, when we get a loan for a house, a mort gage, a death, a death pledge, because it's impossible for everybody to pay this off, that way the bankers will over time accumulate all the land. Well, this death pledge, the, the funds for it are actually invented when we sign the signature. A corporation can't create money. Only a human being can. That's how powerful we are. And that's how the banksters hijack our own commercial energy. We actually create the money with our signature. The bank doesn't create it. They have to get us to come in there. We flesh and blood human beings have to sign that piece of paper, pledge our bond, and then they charge us interest. They charge us a fee to use our energy. <laughs> Do you see the perversion here? We are the producers. If we are the producers, and we are, then why do we live in scarcity and the banksters live in abundance? In order to fight these demons, we have to fight here. We have to unlearn all of the tricks the devil has put over our minds. And the first necessary part of that is to actually discuss these things. Be willing to think about these things. And as you dig, <laughs> you're going to need God. And you're going you're to see God in a wholly different way. Because everything that we've been taught to believe in, all of the institutions, including the church, have been tools to deceive us from our true potential to deceive us about who really controls the world, to deceive us about who creates wars and what the real reasons for war is. There is only one war. There is only one perpetrator. They hire people to do the dirty work, but there is one initiator of war, and that has always been mammon or the banksters. And they changed the name, you know, during Moses' time it was the Pharaoh, uh, during Jesus' time, it was the money lenders or the den of thieves. Uh, during the revolutionary era for the, the colonists, uh, it was the Bank of England. The, you might see them blaming the puppet King George or blaming the puppet uh, Pontius Pilate or blaming the puppet Barack Obama or George Bush. That is the trick. The devil hires... They're, it's minions to be the fall guy. To, the governments are there to give us the illusion that we have representation when in fact the governments represent the banksters, not just the United States. Since they borrowed money, borrower is slave to the lender, the governments are slave to the creditor. Well, since all of that energy is born of us, why are we not the creditors? Why are we the lenders? Uh, so why, why are we the borrowers? Why are we the borrowers slave to the lenders? We should be the lenders. We, we are the value, we human beings. We human beings are the gold. We are the value that backs any currency. We can issue money. Well, that is the foundational change that is the tip of the spear. That is the, the paradigm shift in consciousness is that the creator created us. He's the king of the kings. He, the creator, Jesus, is the king of the kings. Not, not just like, a, say, a King Solomon where we have to submit to his authority. Is that we are all kings. We are sovereigns without subjects. And the way that we give up our sovereignty and our self-determination, our self-worth, our, our hope, our future, our dreams, the foundational way that we give up our future is when we, do, we give up our most fundamental right. And our most fundamental right isn't for a free press, because the bankers can destroy that by 
hiring mercenaries to destroy that right. Um, and that's what's happening right now. We're being surveilled. We're losing our natural rights. They're threatening. All of the, the, the rights given by God, which are recorded in the Bill of Rights, because we, we are giving up our, our most essential natural right, and that most essential natural right is to issue money in the exact same way that a restaurant owner issues a gift certificate, that, that is our most essential right because that, that may, uh, uh, then we, what, what one creates, one controls. So when we control the money, that means the politicians will work for us as a group, as a community. That means the local government works for us. The state government works for us. The federal government will work for us. It's an energy system. It's like an electrical circuit. Uh, I build pools. Uh, it, it, it's like a, a, a sprinkler system. These banksters can irrigate whatever they want to irrigate. If they want to irrigate war and a police state, uh, oppression, if they want to irrigate Hollywood or Disney, well, that, those are the things that they irrigate. They irrigate bread and circuses to keep us deceived from our own debt slavery. There's abundant financing for those systems, but there's not financing for peace, like authentic peace. There's not abundant financing for a, a, a genuine justice And, and that whole perversion occurs through the money system. So we're sitting at the, the precipice of hum the future of humanity because this conflict, people have woken up to their oppression and here we are in Summit County and most believers are completely ignorant to these issues. Most pastors are ignorant, unfortunately, to these issues. And when you speak to them, the conflict arises. That there's a, a, a new perversion of the truth. And that is that there's the, you know, that you have the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the Old Testament's the law. And now you have the, the New Covenant. And you no longer need to obey the laws for usury or for the Jubilee. Because that's, you know, that's going to be Jesus' job. Uh, the only way we can be saved is by Jesus coming to save us. So in the meantime, we're going to allow a, a few, a handful of banking families to literally rape, pillage, destroy, and do the most unspeakable things to humanity. They have a depopulation agenda. They have an agenda to keep us in perpetual war. It's all being engineered right now. So I say is the Bible is one of two things. I believe it's an emancipation manual. It has story after story telling about how prophets and believers rose up against author the, the phony authority that was no longer obedient to God. And as soon as that authority is not obedient to God, that it's destructive, it's, uh, that, uh, that authority is actually a tool of Satan. If that authority is unjust, the, the Bible is filled with stories, including the Creator getting violent with one particular group of people, um, proclaiming a jubilee against debt servitude to the very same people saying that we can only serve God or mammon, right? Mammon is the money power. It's the, the, it's the devil's monetary system used to enslave humanity. Well, the Bible is one of two things. It is either an emancipation manual or it is a therapy manual. It's just, it's a manual for us to read and this is the dogma of the, the modern church, is it's just a therapy manual for us to read while the devil rapes, pillages, steals, and destroys all of creation. Literally, the, 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 the environment, 
our bodies, our souls, our minds, everything is being destroyed by mammon, and the Bible is simply a therapy manual while we wait helplessly until our Father comes to save us. Well, I believe that's absolute garbage. I believe that our Father created us in His image so that we are powerful creators of our future, and by following His law, that we can we can flick these fleas off our, our shoulder. These are parasites, these bankers. It's a few, fo- few handful of bankers. Let's flick them off our shoulders like God created his powerful children to do. Not for us to just sit and be whiny, helpless, pathetic children who can't tie their shoes. That's literally how big a challenge this really is. Our enemy is Smeagol from the Lord of the Rings. It's, it's this self-limitation. It's fear and self-doubt. Well, fear is a liar. Fear is a liar. But the Creator didn't create us to be fearful. Fearful. Uh, think of these vile creatures, these psychopaths that are ruling humanity right now. The Rockefellers, Rothschilds, and... It's a system, even with, you know, if these people are removed from, it's a system that we participate. And again, it's, it's important that we love the sinner and hate the sin. The sin is money monopoly or usury. That is the root of all evil. And when we root out usury, we will root out this evil which is dominating humanity. And to say that we can't change this? What a trick over, what a, what a devilish trick that is, is to say that we need to just sit by and allow everything that the Creator made. All the, look, in, look into the eyes of your son or daughter, or whoever you love, your parent, and, and tell them, say that, hey, you know what? And I want you to do this. Like this, this is a, the Bible says that we're supposed to sit by while your future is destroyed. That's the dogma of the modern church. We have to wait for Jesus to do it. We can't flick these fleas off. They're just parasites. It's literally, it's just imagine you had a, you know, a leech on your shoulder. That's literally what these banksters are, just like Pharaoh was. Pharaoh didn't build the temples, did the, the slaves did, right? It's the same thing. The Pharaoh lived in abundance while, while the slaves sacrificed, while the slaves had a, a spell over them where there's, you know, there's, a, I don't know, 100,000 slaves and one Pharaoh. At any point in time, they could have emancipated themselves, but they didn't believe in themselves. Or they listened to false prophets who said that you should not rebel, you should submit to evil, you, sh- you should live as slaves until God comes save you. Well, the, the, these, these Satan worshipers don't do that. They're, they're, their God, their man God, said that they teach their children a different thing. They teach their children, you issue money, and you will control the slaves, and you will be able to finance a Hegelian conflict and create division and have them war upon each other. And by creating thousands of points or, or, or issues of contention, you will be able to divide and conquer them for thousands of years. At any point, they can escape that, but because they choose to live a life of self-limitation that we, the, the, this is what they teach their, their children, that, that we are subhuman, that we don't deserve to live free, we don't deserve to live with abundance because we're willing to serve them. They believe that if we're willing to be tricked, we should be tricked, just like we are right now. That's what they teach their children. This is, this is our sin, and 
in the church, they, they have us focus solely on our sins. Like all, you know, all of the world's problems are, you know, because there's not enough love in the world, right? That it's, it's just the sin of mankind. And as long as we individually, well, that's, that's garbage. If we can be the, the greatest saints in, you know, but if we keep using the devil's money system, the devil will always have more abundance to reign over us. All of the slaves building Pharaoh's pyramids, if they were the most righteous people, Pharaoh would still continue to dominate them if they continued to serve Pharaoh and use Pharaoh's money. Just like uh, you know, the silver shekels that Jesus turned over, as long as the community continued to use the silver shekels, they would continue to be dominated by the money lenders. Just as today, as long as as we continue to use Federal Reserve notes, we will always energize a system that will have more capacity to war upon us than we will have the ability to emancipate ourselves. Again, we, we can't build the kingdom of heaven by using the devil's money. We'll never have enough money. Though, the devil will have plenty of money to finance his devilish designs, his bank buildings, the modern temples, the modern pyramids for our modern day pharaohs. They'll, they'll always have plenty of money. There, there's never a limitation to them. But we, we have so been duped that we don't even question this. Like, oh, we have to raise, they don't have to raise money. They issue money. But if we want to build a church, well, the debt slaves have to get together and, and we have to raise money or go into debt. The bankers don't do that. And they do that with our energy, not their own. Why isn't the church talking about that? Why, I would submit to you, I just was reading the Bible earlier today, and there's, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. You'll choke on a gnat, but swallow a camel. And the camel represents the, the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room, the elephant in church. The next time you're sitting in a pew uh, uh, worshiping, the elephant in the room that's not being discussed is the devil's control over the private for profit international federal reserve system. Our modern day scribes and Pharisees swallow this camel of monetary corruption wholeheartedly. In the meanwhile, all of our, you know, we got to sit, kneel, and stand at a Catholic church. There's a great focus on that, but they'll swallow all of mammon <laughs> whole as a camel and no discussion of monetary corruption. It's, you know, history repeats. There's nothing new under the sun, and it's exactly what's happening today. And our Creator requires a higher standard of the spiritual leaders in the church. He will give, uh, He'll forgive the sins of the prostitute and, and the tax collector, even those who betrayed Him, even the Romans who tortured Him. He'll forgive their sins. But the spiritual leaders of the church are the gatekeepers who are today keeping us from the kingdom of heaven. Not just them, it's all of our institutions, but we need our pastors to wake up and, and stop swallowing this enormous lie that we are helpless. We need to just sit around and wait and that, that, that this is a benevolent money system, that, that the government controls it or whatever, that is a lie that the devil controls this money system. We cannot serve both God and mammon. And what I find is when we speak to the, the pastors is that they, they protect this money system. 
It's an addiction. We're all addicted to it. I, I don't fault them for that. But I admit, you know, the first step to solving addiction is to admit that we have a problem. And we have a problem. There is an enormous problem. And that's where it starts. That's the first step. The first step is to admit that there is a problem. Well, in conclusion, what I'd like to say is that it's not necessary for us, you know, I, I have a degree in history, and once I woke up to this monetary corruption thing, I realized that all the reasons for wars, and I was very interested in war at the time, um, all these reasons given for wars are all made up. There's been, one, uh, there's been one perpetrator of war, one financier of war, and there's been one victim of war, and that's humanity or creation. There's the great destroyer and there's the creator. And when they engineered war be uh, during World War II, or let's, let's go back f even further how how we are deceived into war. Because that's what's going on right now. They're, they they want to dehumanize a population of people, and it's happening on both sides. They're dehumanizing Jews. Um, they're dehumanizing uh, Muslims. This is all happening in Palestine. Um, you can hear the rhetoric on both sides because the banksters finance Hamas, which is actually created partially by Israel. Um, and the banksters finance uh, the, the, the bankers who control Israel. You can look that back going up with the, the Balfour Declaration, Declaration and the Rothschilds. The banksters, all of the planet, or the countries and planet Earth, they, they, they're, they're bank colonies. And true authentic Jews of Moses, Joshua, and Jesus forbid usury, and they would not permit a, a, a true, authentic Israelite nation would not be permitting usury. It would have a jubilee. It would obey the laws of Moses. Uh, it wouldn't, thou shalt not kill. They would not be murdering. Uh, but in the meantime, it's a tit for tat. This goes all the way back, thousands of years, back to Moses. It's, History repeats, it's the same thing. So the point is, is that we can't do anything right there except be the light right here. We need to emancipate ourselves from our own bank colony here in Summit County. Summit County is a bank colony. It's actually a, it's not even a government, it's a, a municipal corporation that's a subsidiary to the Municipal Corporation of Colorado. That's a big topic, but the, the point is, is until we have to lead by being the light. We have to be the change. And in fact, we are the leaders we have been waiting for. There's nobody outside that's going to come save us. We're going to do this right here. And as long as we continue this conversation, it's going to lead us to the truth and the truth shall set us free. Not just, not just the message of Jesus' love. And that's why some of this is so difficult because the, ah, excuse me, the truth hurts. It hurts to heal, hear some of these things and you literally need therapy. When I first woke up to this stuff, I, I sobbed like a baby uh, because basically I, I trusted so much in the system only to find out that it was a tool for uh, demons that literally want to kill us. It's part of a depopulation agenda. Well, to be leaders, we have to drop the fear, and the more spiritual that we become, the less fear we have. We literally have to sign our own emancipation proclamation, and that comes in the form of issuing our own money. And that's where the truth takes you, is all the way to the usury-free jubilee, 
that's the love revolution where we love and respect ourselves, our brothers and sisters in our, our community. We respect their value. We respect that they will honor uh, the money that they issue. Um, we, we rely upon our community, the body, the true authentic, authentic body of Christ that serves God and not mammon. You cannot serve God authentically and fully until you respect his disdain for mammon. It's the absolute opposite, op opposite energy. You have the creator and the destroyer. The creator is the usury-free sacred economic system. The destroyer is the Babylonian usury debt and death-based Federal Reserve System. It's an international system of domination. Mountain Hours in our community is issued by the have-nots. It's decentralized. It's no debt, no, uh, no usury, no monopoly. The revolution occurs right here. And there's a quote by Bob Marley. He goes, uh, um, Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. So the revolution starts here. And that is, it starts very small, just as Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. The mustard seed is the smallest seed. Um, but what we focus on grows. As we focus on this tiny seed, this kingdom, um, just like mountain hour is very small, but as we focus on that, that grows, it builds. As we participate and we uh, think about it more, it gets bigger. When we talk about it, it gets a little bigger. When we reach out to our neighbors and, and they join, a new business joins Mountain Hours, then it gets a little bigger. Well, before you know it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And just like uh, Jesus says, eventually the, the mustard, uh, the, the birds can go into the mustard tree and they actually can live on it and use it to sustain themselves. Well, in the same way, as the kingdom grows, as mountain hours grows, we can use mountain hours to sustain life. We can live off of its abundance that it creates. We can be self-sufficient. We can, it can feed us, it can clothe us, it can house us. And just, you know, think about housing, for instance. One of the greatest costs here in Summit County is housing, right? So in Babylon's and Mammon's money system, you have a 30-year mortgage. 20 years of that is interest alone. 20 years, two-thirds is interest. Two-thirds, you are, two-thirds of the time that you are paying a 30-year mortgage you are serving mammon. That doesn't go to the local bank. All of that interest goes to the Federal Reserve Internet. It goes to the people who can actually invent money. <laughs> you know? It isn't a profit thing. Like, they can already invent money. It's a methodology to suppress us, to oppress us, to keep us in bondage. Because with a mountain hours usury free system, they actually had a loan like this in uh, Ithaca, New York, is you can have a 10 year mortgage for the exact same payment as a 30 year mortgage when you eliminate the interest. So that's 20 years of your life back. So th if that's your own mortgage, you emancipate yourself, God's plan, God's sacred economics. And if you have, uh, if you're a renter, well, think of the land. The landlord has a greater capacity to ha lower the rent because two thirds of the cost, right? The overall cost of the house is, you know, if, if you know, I'm going to use big numbers here, but let's say it's a, a, a hundred thousand dollars for the mortgage or for the house, and then the 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 interest total cost is three hundred thousand dollars. It's probably more like two fifty or something, but that means two-thirds of the total cost is actually interest. So if you eliminate that, you can reduce the cost of housing. 
we could build more housing, we won't have scarcity of money, and all of the people who work here, who do all the real work in the real world, not the banksters, um, they'll have more money in order to afford housing. So the housing will be cheaper, so incomes will go up, housing costs will go down. Again, the Bible is an economics manual. It's, it's a path to create the kingdom of heaven and abundance so that we can live as artists who manifest their passion and gifts. Our creator created us to be creative, not to just give up on our dreams. So we have to live this life. We have to manifest these dreams and live and walk this narrow path. But by walking this narrow path, we will create such massive abundance and be the guiding light to all humanity. You and me, you know, you, the, the multitudes in Summit County, the, the people, regular people doing amazing things. Because why are they amazing? Because they're made in the image of the Creator. The King of Kings wants us to live as kings, not as debt slaves. The King of Kings wants for us to have an inheritance, a piece of the commonwealth, rather than to be living in debt slaves with nothing, nothing to show for their lives. It's like we, we've been so dehumanized that our value has been removed in so many different ways. And the belief in ourselves, well, I'm, I'm asking you to believe foundationally. You are so valuable that you are the source of money, not the bankers. You are the source of money. And by doing this, by for each one of us walking this path, brother and brother, sister and sister, this time of history will be led across the planet. Not, um, you know, just in the same way that uh, our founders uh, during the American Revolution, this was a very small portion of the planet that made history around the world. That's why it actually says in the liberty, pro proclaim liberty throughout the land. Well, that doesn't mean, you know, Colorado. Proclaim liberty throughout the land. That means jubilee throughout the planet. It has to happen somewhere. And, you know, there's records and people who create amazing uh, things sport-wise and the Olympic, Olympians here, they, they do tricks that have never been performed anywhere else. They perform uh, amazing feats of physical prowess, right? Fearlessness and jumping off cliffs or climbing mountains and doing those sorts of things. Well, let's take that same type of fearless, go big mindset to something that foundationally affects ourselves, our families, our tribes, our businesses, our state, our, our country, and the entire world. We are the leaders of planet Earth. We are made in the image of the Creator. The Creator doesn't want His children to live as slaves. It hurts our it hurts. How much, how much would it hurt you if your children were to live in, in bondage as they do? But to, but to see them, you know, this is an invisible form of slavery we've been conditioned to. But think of the children where it's very apparent. The people on both sides of the conflict in uh, Israel, people on both sides of the conflict in uh, Iraq, or the Ukraine, uh, people who are living in massive scarcity in the Far East, in India. Uh, there's missionaries that go there um, the, the, where their children are s sold as sex slaves as, at a very, very young age. Well, these, these children, all of them, 
were born in the image of the Creator. They have the power to be incredibly amazing. Every one of them has, has those gifts. But it, until we can offer those same gifts to our children of an unlimited future, the king of kings, that means that we should be living as kings, not as debt slaves, not as bond servants to the bankers. Lives of, of unlimited potential. So obviously we don't have the same sort of horrible poverty that you might have in Detroit or Philadelphia or somewhere like that. But we do have problems here. And let's fix those problems. Let's fix those problems and then go bigger. Let's start small and go bigger and have no self-limitation because the demons that rule planet Earth, they have no self-limitation. We should only be limited by what God has, uh, God's law, not man's law. So, This is, this is such a, a foundational change in, in thinking that it's, it's hard for, like, people just turn away in so many instances. So I'm just begging you to be courageous and, and don't be divided by the small stuff because the goal is for each individual community to be self-determining and not have some international bank cabal determine uh, our future. And that's the whole point, is that we can create something so incredibly amazing. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. How much do you want that mustard seed to grow? And, you know, just like the mustard seed that you would grow in the physical world, this is a, you know, a spiritual, he's using a, um, an allegory or a, um, when Jesus says that, you know, the mustard seed that we would have in the real world, we'd have to give it sun, we would have to give it water, um, we could give it some uh, fertilizer. Well, in the same way, to grow the kingdom of heaven, we have to give it our attention. We have to give it our energy. We have to care about that mustard seed. We have to care about, not, not make thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And as in make, we don't want to make the kingdom of heaven something that we have to die for, right? Thy kingdom come on earth is when we follow our creator's law, when we listen to our father. Well, we have to be obedient. We have to recognize that the money thing is a problem. We have to care about that issue. We have to care about growing the kingdom. We have to care. We have to love and nurture it. We have to give up our... Uh, it's coming out of our comfort zone. Like We have to be willing to take a little bit of our energy away from Babylon um, and our obedience to it, we have to stop serving mammon and serve the Creator. And when we serve the Creator, we will co-create the kingdom of heaven. So that is the fulfillment of prophecy. I mean, literally, this is how believers truly and authentically have faith and believe in ourselves that we can create something better than the banksters have created. So... Anyway, I, uh, I wanted to create this as a, a be the change, and rather than being uh, critical of uh, other sermons that you might hear, is uh, I, I wanted to do my own sermon. And, you know, what would I say if the people afforded me a chance in a church to talk about these things? And, and that's what I would say. Literally, the next step, I'd sit down, and we would actually create money. We would sit down, because that's what the banksters teach their kids how to do. We need to teach our kids how to create money. And that's how we come out of Babylon so that we can escape 
uh, Babylon's plagues and uh, you know trials and temptation, uh, you know the tribulations. So this is how it starts. This is how it begins. A journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step, and uh, so quite literally, just by listening to this. You know, listening to Isaiah 61, Jesus at the end of it, he goes, the, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What I'm talking about is a jubilee, is a change in mindset. It, it's, so this change in mindset, just by hearing this, just by, uh, they say when, when a mind is unlocked, it can never be reclosed, something to that effect, a mind once unlocked. And that's what happens is that... Um, our lives should be our own work of art. Like just that, that is a big concept all by itself. And recognizing that fixing the money is the foundational path to where whoever issues the money can have abundance. So right now the banksters issue money so they have abundance. It's really simple. Um, it's the KISS plan. We're keeping it very simple. And everybody who currently has a job, we actually can give them a raise. You don't have to disband government or we just want for the government to be serving the people rather than the government to be serving the banksters. And you can do this gradually, slowly over time. And that's how uh, you know, the bankers took over is they had a plan for incremental takeover of planet Earth. It's the boiling frog thing. When you know, if, uh, if you have boiling water and you put the frog in it and it's already boiling, the frog will jump out. But if you gradually boil it while the frog is in it, the, 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 the frog won't move and it, you'll, it'll allow itself to be boiled alive. Well, that is the strategy, quite literally, that the bankers are performing on us. We're being boiled alive in tyranny and destruction and division and hate and conflict. It's everywhere. Think about it, you see it at the airport, you know, we're being conditioned to be criminals where we all have to be searched and uh, patted down and groped. We just permit it, like it just becomes normalized. Do you think the founding fathers would, of the United States would never permit that, you know? Uh, but we've been uh, anesthetized to this tyranny. Uh, and that's literally what happened to the you know, people uh, in, in Europe, Jews, and they were slowly, uh, during the Nazis' reign, they, they were slowly, uh, the tyranny was growing and, and people just wouldn't accept that, hey, our, our lives are being threatened. Well, that's what's happening right now. Our, our lives, you know, physically, but in terms of our willing, our, our lives in terms of living our true authentic lives, a life of abundance without any limitation. That life is being destroyed where we have to give up that authentic life. Um, maybe not, and, and then obviously that goes into our physical lives as well. So this is a very big topic, but I'm, I'm glad that you've listened to this far because that's so important that because you, right now, just by listening to all this, you've shown more courage than the vast majority of the population of the United States, or even Summit County. You're showing courage right now. I wanna show you some love right now, right? Because when I learned about a lot of this stuff, I, I didn't know about the solution, but I knew about the problems. And man, I, I felt so alone and so fearful. Um, you know, it's literally all of the things that you believed in that you trusted, you're so betrayed that I was crying. Like, uh, we'll, we'll have, you know, groups of us that believe these same sort of things that, that I do. Um, activists, let's call them. Um, when you first wake up to this stuff, you often will have its, uh, they have, the, they call it stages of grief. And it's, um, First, uh, you know, rejection, where you just reject the idea, and then you uh, go into depression and isolation, and I, f I forget all the stages. And then uh, f finally, it's anger and depression and guilt and um, acceptance. Is So I, I accept that these things uh, exist, 
but I don't accept that we need to just deal with it and live with it um, and wait for uh, Jesus to save us. Our Father wants us to be powerful. And so I, I want to honor you for listening to this. And we'll have uh, more of these broadcasts. And when we have an open line forum, this is just a video. Um, when we have an opening, please call in and, and talk about your experience, your experience for what woke you up, what part of this message resonates with you, what do you care about, do you care for yourself, do you care for your children, do you care for Colorado or the community? Like, we need to talk about this. And by talking about it, we make the mustard seed just get a little bit bigger. We make the kingdom grow. So. God bless you and your family, and thank you for being a love revolutionary and having the courage to talk about this. Y'all want to get down with me, say, be ready for the revolution. Y'all want to get down with me, say, we ready for the revolution. Y'all want to get down with me,